there's like a whole mess of them right there. Yeah, you can see that right there. I mean, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six big walleyes are sitting right there. We've we found these little rascals. Now we'll see how <laughs> how to see if we can put our put our floats down on top of them. This should be sort of interesting. Boy, you can't beat the conditions. You know, yeah. out here right now, there's a, a number of different presentations working. You guys got you got guys pulling spinners. You got guys uh, pulling rapalas out in open water, trolling the abyss. And then you got guys that are live bait rigging and the float fishing. Let the float, oh, let the float come up to the, oh. You had one? You got him. Yep. Now that didn't take too long. No. It's small. What? Small? It didn't, it didn't even feel like there's a fish on there, really. Just a little guy. That's the future right there. <laughs> We're on the board, though. Yeah. Fish Mine. number one. Whoop. <laughs> Fish number one on a floating leech. Yeah, there's a couple ways that you can rig up for this particular activity. Um, right now, I'm just using a single hook with a little resin bead on it. Kind of, kind of nice for this live bait presentation with the leech. Um, and I think Dad might have the same thing on, but he was talking about possibly switching over to a jig head. I know a lot of the guides that fish out here quite a bit. Uh... Brad Hawthorne, Tony Roach, and a lot of the, those guys actually fish with a small jig as well, like a 16th ounce jig or an 8th ounce jig, depending on the condi conditions. Just because it's a different look? or It actually pins the leech down a little bit more where the, uh, if you're using a straight hook, the, the leech has a tendency to swim out where if you use the the jig, it actually anchors the leech and actually is, uh, positions the bait a little bit more accurately, you know, straight down, straight down versus actually a lot of times the way we're got it because we got the leader, the leech can actually pull away from the, uh, the sinker in the barrel swivel. It's so calm. Normally, I actually, when we're doing this, you use spot lock a lot. You know, when you come over the fish, you just hit the spot lock on the Minn Kota hold and position. Right now, we actually have nature spot lock, so we don't have to do, all we're doing is sort of sliding around on these bars. When we see a little group of fish, I just, you know, get off the trolling motor and we pitch out. The interesting thing is, you know, this lake has zebra mussels in it and the water is really super clear. Even though you figure, you know, like we're fishing right now in 26 foot of water, whoop, my float is gone. You'd think that uh, the fish wouldn't be spooky, but they are. It's interesting that you still have to get the baits out away from the boat to catch them. If you're sitting right over the top of them, a lot of times they, they, they won't bite that good. It's not a big one, Nick. I think I can handle it. It's just a little, a little rascal. Yep, yep. yep, there he is. You can even get a... Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, oh you got my leech, you little runt. Nice little eater. Boy, that little hook, that's a nice thing with that real tiny moon eye like that. Boy, it hooks them really quickly. You lift up, they grab it, and you set the hook almost instantaneously. Get her back. So usually what I'm doing is I'm, if like this spot, like this flash pass, I'm gonna try to follow the 27 foot contour because we actually set our baits or our floats like 25 feet down. Sometimes up, if we're up on the top of it, which is like 23, we're gonna set our baits at 22. You know, like two to three feet off the bottom, you know, 18 inches off the bottom or so is about right. If the fish are real active, they'll come up farther, but generally you want to within, you know, like this far away from the bottom, the leech moving along with the jig or with Nick, he's just fishing a, a plain hook. He scores. <laughs> Goal. This one feels a little bit better. Probably not, not a pig. No, I can see him. Oh, it's a nice one. That's Solid a really fish. nice one. Wow. Wow. Boy, I saw you pull your, your float up. 
We saw it move and that float just went straight down after you gave it a little pop, couple of pops. Yep, oh, that thing just took off like a, like a bullet. Solid fish. Yeah, it's starting to get into the right ones. Look at that, I don't know if you can see that. A little bug there. When you're fishing the mud, that's why they're here, right? The bugs. Whoop, float down. Whoop, Nick. Ready? Whoop. There we go. There you go. Now we're whacking Another them. decent one. Yeah. Glad we got past those little babies. Little boogers. Here we go. Little head shake action. When these fish are hot, when you get on some schools of them, it's unbelievable how effective this is. When you get on some of them, you'll drop the floats down and you'll get bit instantly. Right now, the fish, you know, with these conditions that we got, the fish are inactive and we got to sit there slow. Boy, that's a good one there, Nick. Look at them that way down there, beautiful fish. Yeah, for what it's worth, we were up on a different piece of structure and those fish in that particular area seem to give us a little bit more problems than these guys. Another solid fish. Right there. Nice. Like Dad said earlier, we're fishing relatively deep, so we're gonna get them right back in. There she goes. This little item is a pretty handy tool for this float fishing, and it's just a bottom finder that you'd use for ice fishing, but we use it for float fishing for open water as well. What I'm gonna do is just clip it on my jig and drop it to the bottom. And the reason being is what I wanna do is really just to make sure my slip float or my stop knot hasn't moved. There goes the stop knot. Okay, whoop, look, look at that. See, it's slipped a little bit. Right now we're in 27 foot of water. I want the bait about two feet off the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is just go like this, make it a little bit deeper here. We'll check it again. Okay, so. Perfect. That's where, my, that's I'm about that far off the bottom, which should be good. Okay, so we just take it up, pop our, keep that handy, and load a leech. The rig is relatively simplistic. When you look at this, it's actually just a jig or a, uh, a light hook, four feet of, uh, three feet of fluorocarbon. And then you'll notice I have a barrel swivel here, and then I actually have two split shot, the float, a bead, and then you actually up on my line, 25 feet into my reel right now is my bobber stop. Nice thing about these small hooks is once you get them in, I'm good. Ooh, this is a good one, Dad. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's a better one. Once you get the hook now in you're them, talking. it's tough to lose them. You may have to hand land them if you don't. No, no, I'm, a, I'm on the net. Don't worry about All it. Right. I'm just sort of setting my depth here. Okay, here we go. Let me grab Mr. Net here. Okay, but there's a better one there, huh? You ready Let's for see. me, Ricky? No, well, I'm getting closer. I'll get over on this side here. here. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Wow, that's a better one. Wow, yes. That's a good one there. Look at that guy there. Now you're talking. Nice. That's a biggie. Holy Ooh. mackerel. Biggie indeed. Nice. Now you're talking. Oh my gosh, he smoked it too. I only get, I only let him have it for about a second. So, wow. just by a wire. You get in there quick. Oh. There we go. How about this girl? No, nice. No question about it. You can see the effectiveness of floats for walleyes. You know, it's a, been a bluebird day, absolutely flat calm. Yep. You wouldn't consider this walleye conditions, but floats can make it happen. Yeah, absolutely.